Okay, so in this video today, we're gonna to talk about how to fix that slice forever. And when I get people come through that door for a golf lesson and they tell me they are struggling with their driver and they slice it, I know exactly the two things and the two movements that I'm gonna try and encourage that golfer to do to get rid of it. And today, I'm gonna to share it with you guys. So there are two things that are gonna become a real focus point in the video. First one is rotation in the backswing position. And the second one is the wrist positions in the downswing. And how we're gonna get both of those working together to fix the problem of the slice. Now, first of all, to clarify, the problem of a golfer who is slicing the ball is they are swinging too much across the golf ball with an open face. And we need to fix that. We need to fix that by trying to get the club head to come more on the inside with a feeling of closing the face. Let's start there, which means that our first conversation is gonna be about the wrists. Now, if I hold the golf club out in front of me here, adopting my normal grip, what we can see is when I introduce flexion, okay, which is basically the flattening motion of the lead wrist, what this does is this moves the club head like so. So you can see the way it moves the club head in this direction behind the hands. Now, if I allow a very small amount of arm rotation to occur as well on my forearm, what we can start to see is if we put a little target line in here is how that subtle motion of just moving my wrist just a little bit, just a little bit of flattening how much it moves the club head. And also if I introduce a small amount of forearm rotation, you can start to see how important the correct wrist positions are for helping us hit more from the inside of the target line as opposed to from the outside of the target line. So this is a really key movement. And what we know from hack motion which is a device which lives on your wrist and on your forearm and the data they've collected with professional golfers is when professional golfers start coming in towards the downswing position we can we, we know from this research that that lead wrist is progressively flattening so between the top of the backswing and the early downswing there's a small amount of movement but as that golfer starts to really turn the corner and get the club into a real delivery position, then these wrist motions are really starting to happen. There's a lot of flattening of that lead wrist, and that is going to, as I just explained, really help you control the club path. If you don't have good wrist positions and your wrist retains more extension, which is this position, then that's the reason why that club head is going to be susceptible to swinging more across the ball and swinging more across our target line, which is obviously what we don't want to be doing. So if that's kind of you and that sort of, you know, you're like, oh, that sounds like something you should be practicing, then that's what I'd suggest. So what you do is you start just getting a feeling when you're doing some downswings, sort of flattening the, this wrist, then there are different ways you can do that. You can get the feeling of, you know, sort of revving your wrist, if you like, sort of like so. So just getting a feeling of, of sort of, you know, almost sort of like unrevving a motorbike, so to speak. So I'm aware it would be the other way, but you get the idea. You're sort of twisting the club shaft. This would obviously induce flexion, which again would move the club head behind the hands and get you to hit from the inside. And I'm sure as you mess around with it, there are different feelings with inside that. But as long as you understand the importance that the wrist position influences your club path, and that's gonna help you neutralize that slice, then that's definitely stage number one. Now, the slight complexity with solely just understanding the wrist positions is that however your arms move in the backswing are also going to have a huge influence on how your wrists can move. And what we know thanks to research which is carried out to gears is that with professional golfers, what we see and I'm gonna focus our attention very much in the early backswing, which is when we're at lead arm horizontal. What we know from the research that's carried out is that professional golfers don't get their lead arm too close to their chest. So if I sort of stand this side for a moment, and I'm gonna give you two different demonstrations. The first one is a very typical movement of a professional golfer. Hands stay in front of the chest on the backswing position. And then let's say a more typical amateur position, somebody who sort of struggles with a slice and what they tend to do is bring their arms in. And again, I'm gonna pause lead arm horizontal. 
you can see the effect that this would have. The easiest way to sort of think about this is that the closer that your arms are to your body, the more tendency you'll have to have extension in the wrist. The further your arms are away from the body, the more prone you'll be to flattening the wrist. So can you see the difference and the importance of actually, well, hence the latter part of this lesson is how we move in the backswing position. So I think what tends to happen is that golfers don't really understand exactly how to trigger a rotation in the backswing. They don't really understand the importance of how to turn the chest in the backswing position. And what they tend to do is just do things like move a little bit, move everything sort of together, and this just encourages the arms to get really stuck to the side of the body. Now, inevitably, if your arms are too close on the way back, and then as you start your downswing, they're gonna to be too close, hence again, you're gonna really struggle to manipulate your wrist positions because it just won't work that way. As I said at the beginning of the video, you need to put both of these movements together. So how do you get away from this? Well, quite simply, what you do is you put your hands across your shoulders, you take your golf posture, and what I want you to do is just get a feeling that you're trying to keep this trail leg nice and flexed. And you're just gonna turn. So if you like, you get your back to the target, or you can get your chest to the wall on towards your right hand side or you know whichever your sort of trail hand side and as you're sort of doing this exercise what you should start to feel is more chest rotation not just moving my shoulders so you can see the way I'm not just moving my pelvis and my shoulders at the same rate of rotation okay what I'm doing is I'm more getting a feeling of moving the upper body first and as I start this this will help me sequence a good chest rotation which will then give me the capacity to keep my arms straight. If you kind of move like this, you're just gonna really struggle to, to, to get those arms nice and straight. You turn that chest, it's gonna make life a lot, lot easier to encourage that arm to stay further away from the chest. Then all of a sudden, if, and when I see it with people, I get the chance to teach, if they turn the chest in the backswing, so they get those shoulders to 90 degrees, and then as they start the downswing, they start to get the feeling of flattening that wrist, all of a sudden you're gonna have this real good control of width in the backswing position, which is something you need for the driver, and those wrist positions to control that club path, which is massive to eradicate that slice. Now, if this is the first time you've really concentrated more on your chest movement, and particularly you're gonna be aware of that in your backswing position, what I would also suggest is this video here. This video is a documentation of a live lesson where I talk about the importance of the chest rotation in the downswing, and Lynn, a golfer and a student of mine shows you the dramatic difference it made to her golf swing. See you guys again really soon.